is adults tend to get stuck in grief. Once we lose somebody, we are sad and that sadness stays with us. Kids don't do that. Kids pop in and out in these almost grief storms that kind of just pop into their life and then back out. And they may pop in throughout the day or it may be once a week. It looks very different than adults. When our kids are grieving, we often, as parents, want to take their pain completely away or take it for them. But if you're a parent, you might also have kids that grieve differently than you. If this sounds a little like you, then you might also be wondering, how can you recognize a child's grief pattern or grief storm type? How can we help our kids talk through and about their grief? And how can cars and texting be a great way to discuss grief as well. Today on our show, I have Dr. Annette Athey. She's a grief specialist and child development expert who has over 20 years in mental health field. And if your child or family is currently grieving, then this is the episode for you. Listen now. Hey, welcome, Annette. It is so good to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I am so interested in what it is that you do, because I think it's very unique. It's not something that a lot of people know is available to families, and that's grief counseling. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to hit you hard right away with a tough question. So what is the difference between experiencing grief versus experiencing trauma for kids? I think for many of our kids and adults, too, is that grief pops up for lots of different reasons. For most of the time, a loss of a parent or a grandparent, but it's even grieving friendships ending or transitioning to a new school. Grief can happen in a lot of ways. And I think what parents don't always know is that these grief things show up and there are things that we need to be talking about, having conversations about, And parents don't always know the right way or a way to bring these conversations up. And because they're not talking about them, then sometimes those create more of this trauma issue, this bigger mental health problem because it's gone on and our children assign their own meanings to what this grief means. And if we're not helping role model or guide them as their parents, then they're left to their own devices. Yeah, and I would think that our assumptions of what they're experiencing are probably quite a bit different than what they're actually experiencing too. Absolutely, because as adults, we've had a lifetime of experiences And those experiences have different meanings to us. And for instance, when a child loses a parent, we as adults can see all of the things that their parent is now going to not be a part of. For instance, graduations, a wedding, big events, and our child isn't there yet. They're not thinking about the next 20 or 30 years of events that parent isn't going to be at. And so our kids pop in and out of grief, which is very different than adults, because adults tend to get stuck in grief. Once we lose somebody, we are sad and that sadness stays with us. Kids don't do that. Kids pop in and out in these almost grief storms that kind of just pop into their life and then back out. And they may pop in throughout the day or it may be once a week. It looks very different than adults. That's really fascinating. And it it really gets my mind going because I'm thinking most parents would want to try to solve or help their kids process. And so they're probably really confused when the action doesn't seem to be grief anymore. And then it comes up again and goes away and comes up again. So they're probably inadvertently trying to fix something that maybe doesn't need to be fixed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And our kids naturally by design are popping in and out of these feelings. And us as adults want them to stay in the sadness or why isn't my kid 
looking sad all the time or what's wrong with them. They're okay to go and play. And it's very well intended. And as parents, sometimes when our kids are in the middle of their grief storm and they're experiencing this sadness, we also don't know what to do with that because we just want them to be happy. We don't want them to be stuck in the sadness. Okay, I think I'm going to have you explain what a grief storm is now, because I think that would help our listeners really understand exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so I, over my 20 years of being a former licensed counselor, I noticed that there were five different types of grievers. And in those patterns, kids grieve five different ways. And so we have the rain shower grief, which a rain shower griever, these kids are able to talk about their feelings. They're able to express their feelings. When they come up, they're ready to talk about it. So if they're sad, they're going to be crying. They're able to label that. We then move into the thunderstorm grief. And the thunderstorm grief are those kiddos that almost those feelings come up and they're just trying to get your attention. So they're pretty fleeting. So the sadness may come up for a second, long enough to get your attention, and then they've moved through their storm. The blizzard grief kids are the category that I would say most parents and myself worry about because they're the kids who keep everything inside. Internally, they have a lot going on, but they are not going to be the kid who comes to you with those feelings. They're waiting for you to approach them. And their face may look like everything is fine, but on the inside, things are not fine. The tornado grief are those kids who have these big feelings, big emotions, and these big reactions come up. They need to really let the storm out. They need to experience these feelings, and then they're able to move through their grief storm. And then we have the hurricane grief, which are those kids where you can see it building. Sometimes it's building for a couple of days. Sometimes it's building for a week or two. And then there's a big explosion. And they're going to be the kids who act out, who are going to take their feelings out on you. They're going to call you names. They're potentially going to hit or throw things because they don't know what to do with those feelings. They're just so big, they almost overtake them. And so these five different grief storm types, it's not that one type is better or worse than the other, but with these five patterns of behaviors, it's really about your child's personality and how they handle big emotions. It's really not just about grief. And so what I have found is that most parents who take my grief storm quiz to identify what type of griever their child is. It, they all talk about how this is just spot on with who their kid is, that I have really nailed these grief storm types and they really feel seen and heard once they take this quiz. And you said also that sometimes the parent isn't the same as the kid. So then there's a whole new type of level with that communication of what's happening, right? Absolutely. So a great example of that is if you take the grief storm quiz for your child and then you go back and take it for yourself, good example of that is when your child is a rain shower grief type. And so this means they're able to cry, they're able to express their feelings when they're mad, when they're sad. And maybe you as a mom have taken the grief storm quiz and you're more of a blizzard type. So the type who's going to keep it inside. You're going to look like everything is fine on the outside, but on the inside, things are not okay. You're going to become triggered by your rain shower grief child because they're crying and you don't understand what's wrong with them. Why can't they keep their tears inside? Why 
do they have to express their sadness all the time? Why do they have to talk about their loved one who has died all the time? And again, it comes from a well-intentioned place, but it can definitely lead to some frustration or irritation because you're looking at your child almost saying, why can't you be more like me? And it's just not their personality type. That's going to be hard because I think, again, we're trying to solve and make them feel better. And so you make a lot of assumptions as parents that you don't realize that you're actually making. And you're like, why can't you feel better? What's going on? And yeah, that would be, that'd be really tricky. So when they take that test and you realize that they're, you're different than them, then what's the next step? How does that get resolved? In the grief storm type quiz, I, I do provide a lot of information, kind of awareness about these grief storm types, but also there is some specific things or ways you can handle these grief storms by knowing how to respond, what kinds of words or statements to use with your child can help allow your child to have these grief storms and for you as the parent to become the safe container for them to have or experience this grief storm and where you can work together. Everything that I teach is very much from the perspective of let's work smarter, not harder. And so everything I teach is something you can do, but also your child can do. So there's nothing that is, oh, only parents can do this. All of the tools are helping both so that you're modeling as the parent, but also the child is learning because they've never experienced grief. Most likely this is going to be their first experience and this is new to them. It's unfamiliar territory where you as an adult probably have been through this before. And so you may just need some guidance on how to coach your child. I think the tools are really essential too, because the perfect scenario would be that your parent, as a parent, you're always there to help them. But let's say you're not there and they're at a friend's house or they're learning these skills and down the road, they're off somewhere else, college, whatever. Those are skills that they can take with them as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everything that I teach is not only just for older kids, but they're very adaptable things. So even if you have kids that maybe are toddler age, as elementary, and then a high schooler, there are things that are very adaptable that you can make very age appropriate, which I think is really important because as parents, we are working hard. We have a lot going on. And so we don't want to be trying to figure out or adapt to make things more difficult. We want to ease and adding things in as as easily as possible. So when it comes to the environment and trying to, to create an environment that's going to support your child and not overwhelm your child, are there any tricks or anything that that we as parents should be really aware of? I think the biggest thing is being willing to experiment, being willing to step out of our comfort zone and thinking that we have to say things in a certain way or craft these perfect conversations where most grief conversations in about a three to five minute short conversation are going to be the most productive, the most helpful, and the most meaningful. One tip that I usually share with all parents is car talks are a fabulous time. When, and this I think applies most with teenagers, but even with our younger kiddos, because our kids don't have to look at us. And so they're more willing to engage with us and really tell us what they think because our eyes are going to be on the road. And so they're able to share a little bit more. And because you're in the car, you're going somewhere, at some point that conversation is going to end. 
So they don't have to worry that you're going to step up on your soapbox and they're going to be sitting here listening for hours. And so I think car talks are a huge help for parents. That's a great suggestion. There, It's idle time otherwise, and it's just the perfect opportunity. When it comes to people reaching out to you and getting help, do you have any areas that are easy for people to get into, get their feet wet and find out what it's all about? I do. So I have the quiz, which helps you identify what type of grief storm your child is. And that's at griefstormquiz.com. And then I also have a guide that helps parents understand what words are most helpful to use when talking about death and dying. And so they can sign up for that freebie. And then I also have my Facebook group, which is Growing Up With Grief. And that Facebook group is free. I have a lot of parents in there who share their experiences. We do Facebook Lives. Uh, There's a lot of education, a lot of videos in there on how to talk about death, how to explain death, talking about grief stories about how to use tapping. So there's a lot of free information in there that lives in the group, um, as well as just having that community and knowing that you are not the only one who is struggling. Um, Parents talking about kind of their frustrations in, in helping their child talk or why aren't they talking to me? And so it's just a, a great place to know that you are not alone in the struggle. That's awesome. And I know you have social media presence as well that people could spy into as well. Where where can they find you there? Yes. Uh, So it's Dr. Annette Mm Athey. And that is, I have a a Facebook business page as well as I do have Instagram. I don't spend a lot of time on Instagram because I find that most of my people are on Facebook. But definitely the Facebook group is the place to spend the most time just because it has most of the resources in there. Everything is housed in the guide section. So it's easy to find if you're looking for a specific age that you're struggling with or a specific problem, those anxious behaviors or the acting out behaviors, uh, wanting to know how to handle those. And so they're already in there. You can binge watch it like Netflix and go in and watch video after video. Or you can just go in and look for the specific topic that you're looking for. Awesome. Awesome. And I know it's hard to come up with this because maybe a parent isn't experiencing uh, grief in their family right now, but let's say there is something going on. What are a few steps that parents could do immediately after the podcast to help their kids and maybe even themselves? Again, I would highly encourage that they go and take the grief storm quiz at griefstormquiz.com. That helps them just have an idea or a check-in on how their child is grieving. And so how those specific behaviors might be showing up in their household. And again, take it for yourself because as a parent, you might be grieving in a different way. And so that also helps just give you a little bit more insight and awareness. And I believe that having that awareness is step one in being able to do things differently if it's not going well at home. The next thing I would suggest is that after you've identified what type of griever, I do offer some specific tips in there for your grieving type. And for most, it's have the conversation. Ask the question, use your loved one's name. So specifically asking your child, hey, it's been a while since we've talked about dad, just wondering how you're doing. And then stop and listen. Don't try to answer for them. Don't push them to answer as quickly as you think that they should answer. Just stop and wait. And most of the time, our kids have something to say. 
It's unfortunately, as parents, we sometimes want to hurry up the conversation because we're uncomfortable in having this grief talk and have the conversation. Don't worry about it being perfect or going a certain way. Just start the conversation. And once once you have that conversation, you can always then go back and reevaluate, okay, how do I want to do this different next time? Yeah. And for your teenagers, it might be use text, ask mm -hmm. them over text instead of in person, because we all know most of our teenagers want to spend time in their bedroom alone, doing their own thing, mm -hmm. take advantage of the technology and start the conversation that way. That's perfect. Those are great suggestions in that. I love the fact that you're meeting the kids where they are. And I think that's exactly where you need to be as a parent coming in and not trying to anticipate how they should react. So perfect. Exactly. Annette, thank you so much for your time. And I know that if people are really struggling with this or if they're concerned about how their child is acting and not sure what to do, you'd be the perfect resource to talk to. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.